finally we can, we can begin our series on ancient Mesopotamia. You see, we historians have arbitrarily defined civilization as any society that can produce written script. And that is why we call Mesopotamia the cradle of civilization. It is the first society to invent a written language. And from this language, all contemporary language families were born. It doesn't matter that human tribes have existed for hundreds of thousands of years before Mesopotamia, because even though they had their own spoken languages, they never wrote them down on any medium. Before I get to the oldest written language, let me first touch upon Homo sapiens, our specific species of human being. Homo erectus was dying out, but Homo sapiens first appeared in Africa 300,000 years ago. This means that our species has survived our environment for 300 millennia. There are scientific papers that attest to this 300,000 year date, and I've left the links to these papers in the description below. Obviously, we were organized in tribes for hundreds of thousands of years, not harboring the motivation to write down our words into stone or papyrus or whatever. However, 7,500 years ago, in 5500 BC, the first Mesopotamian civilization, Sumer, originated in modern-day Iraq. We know that it first emerged 7,500 years ago because we can carbon date the artifacts that we have excavated in Iraq. I have left in the description a link to these artifacts, which have been preserved in New York City's Metropolitan Museum of Art. That's right, human civilization began 7,500 years ago. Apparently, 1,500 years before the world of the young Earth creationists. They not only reject evolution, but also claim that the Earth is only 6,000 years old, which, to me personally, is just like saying that the Milky Way galaxy is only 10 feet long. <laughs> of course, Sumer did not yet become the cradle of civilization until 3200 BC, when the Sumerians invented cuneiform, the world's first ever written script. What they would do is take a handful of wet clay and use a thin reed to write down Sumerian characters. That way, the clay would harden, but the wedges left behind by the reed would not get filled up. Effectively, the Sumerians inscribed their words into something that would later become stone. It was a form of stone writing. Again, I've left in the description a link to the archaeological evidence that cuneiform dates back to 3200 BC. This ingenious method of writing paved the way for all the other scripts that we know today, such as Roman script, Latin script, Devanagari, Hiragana, Katakana, and Kanji. Initially, cuneiform was invented simply for the purpose of giving government officials the instructions about the distribution of, of goods. So there's nothing really interesting about the earliest cuneiform writings. They're just to-do lists of which goods to ration, how to ration them, who gets more goods than others, and so on and so forth. It wasn't until much later that the Sumerians started writing poetry, such as the Epic of Gilgamesh, the oldest written story known to humankind. Moreover, it was the fantasy literature that preceded all other fantasy literatures. Now, before I conclude this lecture on History 01, you might ask, why do I keep inserting links into, this, into the description? Well, the simple reason is that I told you before that I refuse to regurgitate facts. I don't want you to believe me just because I tell you to. No, I want you to believe me because of the empirical evidence that I put forth. This is what it means to think like a historian. I'll see you all again in a few minutes, ready to begin our series on mental experiences in psychology 01.